really been a while. This is Richie Dotson coming to you again from Chateau Debris, a.k.a. my office, my shop. And what do we have here? Besides the piece of tape holding the loose binding on the old original tenor neck, we have a Nick Lucas. I think this one's about 1925 or 6. I'd have to look at the FON to tell you the truth. And uh, it's been a long day, so I'm not going to. So the Nick Lucas pattern came on the Nick Lucas Gibson guitar of the same time frame. And uh, Nick Lucas, unbeknownst to lots of modern folks, actually was the, uh, I don't know if he wrote it or not, but the first popular version of Tiptoe Through the Tulips did not come from that long-haired, freaky, weird dude in the 70s with the ukulele. It came from Nick Lucas. Go look him up. Use Google. So what we've got here is a five-string neck built. Not sure if you can see the color and the grain of this gorgeous piece of Brazilian rosewood. It's a little chocolatey, but it's got lots of personality in person. And nice matching neck, but in in curly maple. Now, when, you, when you're doing a neck for one of these in curly maple, you have to take this into consideration. The end grain of the curl uh, is gonna soak up more. That's what makes that stripey. And then the lighter, of course, is the end. So in grain and then side grain. So it, it grows like a wave. And we've got a nice little, how do you do there? Uh, this is a, a little more chocolatey, but uh, man, what a great little match. Uh, and this is uh, probably dyed pear wood or something from the day. So it turned sort of a Hershey's brown, if you will. Uh, but uh, we got a pretty good lick on these, as, as Jim Mill says. <laughs> and uh, and we, we took our pattern directly off an original, and we even have... Uh, they're not all going to be the same because they were hand cut, but we even have some asymmetry built into these. And we've we've added an extra one of these. We just yeah, extended it a little bit. And the, uh, the side dots were extended down on this one into areas where there wasn't inlay, but sure makes it handy for me to play. And this has... One of the larger tone hoops and a slightly smaller diameter, like a 10 and a half inch head, maybe 10 and three quarter. I don't know. I got to measure these things. I, I can't possibly know everything. That's why I own rulers and ink pens and stuff. For what it is and for the lack of a modern tone ring at all, this was the larger hoop. This thing got a lot of power. playing. It's probably better they can't get me that way, right? This has a ton of volume and personality. My goodness. You don't have to beat it to death or bag it. It's really just going to give it back to you. Yeah. 
First new strings, blah, blah, blah. But the banjo is going, when it seats in, <laughs> this is like one of those instruments that you walk up to a jam session with or, you know, to your buddies at a picking session and it's unassuming looking. And then when you, when you crank down on it, they're like, what happened? What is that thing? What is it? That don't weigh much. That's right. <laughs> kind of unexpected this is oh I don't know the fourth or fifth one of these that I've converted this one just seems to have a little attitude you know a good in a good way uh, I'm always surprised got a little girly on the back I like big fan of ya so uh, got a Dotson bridge of course uh, man, we're even playing it with Dotson picks I gotta make some more of those because banjomart.com doesn't have any right now, and that's kind of my fault for wanting to take off a couple of days for the 4th of July and be with the family and daughter's birthday, my anniversary, which is today. <laughs> so... <laughs> Given as you go up the neck, it's crazy. It's not. That's not typical. Well, I don't pick much anymore except to test drive these old girls. But this old gal drives fine. Uh, a couple of differences. Before I start boring you to death, I did put a hand stop on this because I think it just feels right. The originals, of course, didn't. Yeah, we can do them without it, but I don't know. I like that uh, little um, physical reference. Oh, I'm there. I just don't know. Uh, I know I can't. It's hard for me to get over how much bottom end and power this has for what it is. Really super light. Uh, the, these, are, uh, these are a lot of fun. This is a TB2, TB tenor banjo, two, style two. Not like the 30s twos that had the perloid fingerboard and the walnut. This had a walnut colored maple resonator, single layer binding. Uh, so they did change quite a bit. These still had the little quarter inch hex nut uh, that hold on your resonator. That uh, changed about 1920 eh, into 1926, 27. That was just about gone, but I don't know. It's just hard to get over what this thing has. <laughs> Tighten the tuners up.
Got a little bit of a nasal thing, got a little bit of a punch thing, got tons of volume. It'll run you out. I just think it's fascinating. Sorry I went on and on and on about this, but the old diamond flange, diamond flange Nick Lucas Gibson TB2. Look at those old 1920s knurled Grover two tabs. This thing's just ate up with the cool. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with me. This is a weird one, but uh, just had to uh, had to film this one. Uh, I know I say this a lot that man, I wish I could own this one, and 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 this one is absolutely love to own it. Um, put this in the case and sneak it out at a jam session and have people go. What is that? Then I'd probably take 30 minutes of explaining it instead of picking, but you get it my point. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos and like seeing these things that we do here at Acoustic Box, uh, uh, you can check us out at AcousticBox.com. Visit our web store, if you like, at uh, 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 BanjoMart.com, and that's also attached to AcousticBox.com. And uh, find us on Facebook. Use the power of, good, of Google for good, not evil. Subscribe to this if you like seeing this. Hit the little bell notification and you'll be alerted whenever I get the urge to uh, upload one of these. And uh, the next one I'm going to do is going to be, well, the next few I do are going to be kind of fun for me. So thanks again. Remember, we got a Neumann U87 and a KM184 Neumann here to balance this out using a little Logitech HD 1080p and the MacBook Pro and uh, fairly basic stuff, but uh, we do have an 800 watt diffuser here, so I don't look like a pumpkin or a ghost if I can remember to turn that auto light thing off. Yeah, whatever. Uh, have a good one. Whoops. Thanks for watching. I mean that. God bless y'all. Bye.